Welcome to another Bart and Paul session. And what's the subject tonight, Bart? The Naples Arrangement. The Naples Arrangement. It's nothing to do with ice cream or Italy, really. It's something that's described in Alistair Crowley's Book of Toss. And it's, it's a way of... It's, it's Alistair Crowley's more sophisticated version of the Kabbalistic tree of life, particularly the, the supernal triangle and the numbers from one to 10. And it's not as abstract or theoretical as you think, because every time we do a three card reading, we are actually using the same system. So the three cards go into the fourth position and that fourth position is the princess or the uh, earth or its higher position. And that's where the interpretation comes from. And a couple of weeks ago, inspired by an aspect of the Naples arrangement, we talked about pairing the cards in terms of a line. And a line has no breadth and it has no length until you add a third point. So, and we use that, that line as a way of understanding and analysing major cards using the moon, the moon and the high priestess, I think, didn't we? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So, just to make things a little bit more interesting and complicated, Alistair Crowley, you think there's, you know, th that is what I described the Naples arrangement has N, N so four, and um, one to 10. He actually has first Naples arrangement on page 13 of the Book of Toth, as opposed to the, the one we all know on page 32. Are you following this, Bob? I am following so far. Don't go too fast. Any questions? Um, well, so it's clear the Naples arrangement has to do with the Tree of Life. Yes. And which... The Sephiroth on the Tree of Life. So... The Naples arrangement is the description he put there where one is a point, two is a line, three is a plane. Yes. Is that Crowley's, this is, is that the Naples arrangement? It is. And in the first version of the Naples arrangement, he actually goes into this in a lot more detail. It's basically geometry. Um, and you go, you have a point which has no dimension, it has no size. Um, and the, and then, it, then you have a second point, which is essentially the same, but different, and we join them with a line. So this is uh, knew it and had it, basically, if you know your Thelema stuff and Lee Burrell. So before that, we had the three nothingnesses, uh, N, N, Sof, and N, Sof, or. So this is kind of space and light, basically. There, there, there is no form. There's no structure. It's just... So to have light, I mean, it's like the Bible says, let there be light. So that there was kind of light before then. Otherwise, you couldn't have said there was light. But it's still the blackness, which is implicit because there wasn't any light. Yes. Well, before the blackness, there wasn't any blackness either. There was just nothing. Yes. But well, because, yeah. the, because there was nothing would be black. Except, of course, it's like black holes. You know, black but, holes, they glow, don't they? So then, it then, gets then, all then, a little bit complicated. You are good to making a mis mistake, Paul, because by saying blackness, you are visualizing, and by visualizing, you are totally missing the point of aim. Ooh. That's the whole point of Ain. Ain Sof Or is limitless light. Ain Sof is just nothing, Ali. Ain Sof Or is nothing, limitless light. Eh? Ain Sof is nothing limitless. So which means Ain Sof Or is like bright white light everywhere. Eh? Ain Sof is just blackness everywhere. And Ain just means nothing. And the other Absolutely. problem is duality, because black defines white. Then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's a duality. Uh, yeah. The only thing you can say about Ain is that it is. Um, well, you're not even sure that you can say it is either, because there's a, 
because that brings in is not. So it's a negation. Nothing is. A negation is it? See, see, this is already, we started arguing, we haven't even got going yet. <laughs> but when, in the Book of Lies, nothing is, nothing is not. But isn't that in the Book of yeah, Lies? Yeah, he does. Yeah, I mean, it's why it's the Book of Lies so called, because it's the opposite is the truth. See, this is the, why are there two versions of the Naples arrangement? And we only think of one. Uh, if, you, if you read the book of Toss, it, and the top of page 13, it says the Naples arrangement. And you right, get to page 32, and it says the Naples arrangement. Yes, it is. Because I also missed that one, actually, until you just reminded me yeah, of it. Yeah. Oh, I could yeah. get myself. Uh, and, and you told me that you'd actually been reading the book of Toss. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, the thing, I so. uh, recently I read the whole book of Thoth again, so... Uh, yeah, you completely missed that bit out, didn't you? You didn't notice, you didn't say, Paul, why is there two Naples arrangements? Because I thought there was only one. Well, I thought it was actually the same. It's not. I, I thought not the, just, same. The, 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 the first one is describing the second one. That's what I thought. Yes. So the, the first one is in terms of geometry, which is points. And a point is actually to do with Ketra as well, actually. And so there's, you know, the, if you have infinite space, you don't, you can't see infinite space. And infinite mean, really means just as far as you can see. You know, the horizon. If you go higher up, the horizon just moves a bit further along. You see, it's, 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 it's a kind of evolving thing. If you put a dot, if you, if you have a plain piece of paper and you put a dot on it, suddenly there's definition to that page that wasn't there before. I'm glad your son was wearing some pants when he walked past. Um, <laughs> on candy camera. <laughs> oh, he's got to be on YouTube and he won't even know it himself. Yeah, so, yeah, so we have cats walking across soon, won't we, as well? Oh, yeah, so oh. if you just put a point, a dot, on a plain piece of white paper, suddenly there's definition there that wasn't there before. Um. Yes? Yeah, can I be smart as again? Now, when you think of an infinite plane, to be honest, it's like in geometry, when you have a straight line, that, you know, a, lot, a rahta we call it in Flemish. I don't know how you call it in English. In geometry, a line, you know, an endless line. Yes, it has no, it, it has no length. Eventually, it always comes back at the same point because theoretically, a yeah. perfect... In, 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 in like a circle of, 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 with infinite dyna, uh, radius is a, is a straight yes. line. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So which means an infinite space is eventually a globe. And a globe, no, do you think it? if you had an infinite number of tarot readers, they'd eventually make sense? <laughs> no, because if you want to make someone... How many monkeys read... does it take to write Shakespeare? Yeah, yeah but no, and, 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 and if you want to make someone really sick, just the more doctors you call in, the sicker the person will be coming. Yeah, well, because it's getting serious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one good one. The more doctors you send in, the more chance you'll die. See, we're desperate to get off the subject here, aren't we? No, no, no. The Naples arrangement and the Tree of Life. I love that. I think it's cool matter. Right. So apparently it's called the Naples arrangement because Rowley, Crowley wrote this on the back of a napkin while in Naples Bay. In, not in the bay, by the bay. Because it gets soggy and wet. Yeah. So the, so the thing is, hang on a minute. Let's, let's, let's try and get on a bit here. Yes. So nothingness, so hang on. So one must formulate this thesis, he says. This is the first. This is Naples 1. We'll get to Naples 2. If there is anything except nothing, it must exist within this boundless light, within this space. Within this inconceivable nothingness, which cannot exist as nothingness, this is this is the um, this is the doctrine. I think it's the Mahayana doctrine uh, of duality that comes up in Vedic um, and descriptions as well. It's a very profound and deep kind of concept. He's talking here. 
And this is in a Tara book. Okay, so this is, you know. Um, but it has to be conceived. Of, so this inconceivable nothingness, which cannot exist as nothingness, but has to be conceived of as a nothingness, composed of the annihilation of two imaginary opposites. So this is very much quantum mechanics that we're going into here as well, basically. Uh, what page are you on? Sorry? What Did I wake you up there? Sorry. No, 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 what I'm looking where you are. I can't find you here. I'm looking on. The Naples arrangement, it... page 13, the first paragraph. Yeah, was it? Oh, yeah, okay. Second, yeah. second paragraph, second paragraph. Ah, sorry. Ah, 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 that, ah, the second one. Yes. Because the first one is an end of four, and we had that argument. So now we're on paragraph two. So, so the two imaginary opposites that don't exist in this space that you cannot conceive of annihilate. They didn't exist in the first place, but now they mutually and it's a mutually assured destruction, as good old Americans would say. Um, the nuclear option becomes the point. Okay, so now we have a point from two points that didn't exist, which were imaginary to start with and couldn't be anything because we can't imagine what it is, come together to create the point. Hey, and the point okay. is there a singularity in there, you think? Sorry? Singularity, we could say the singularity, yes, yes. Yeah. Which is an, uh, sense, a sense of unity that, you know, if it's any physicists out there who write to tell us we've got it wrong, we know we've got it wrong, but it'd be good enough for this, okay? And the concept of a singularity is a tiny little dot which holds all the potential for creating a universe. Right, yes. So we're talking about the Big Bang. Yeah, it's supposedly it. What, one, which Big Bang? The last one, you mean? Your son now, now has, a, has a dress on. He walked past with a skirt. Oh, it's his Jedi uniform. Oh, is it? Okay, whatever. So the point, he now defines the point, has neither parts, singularity, nor magnitude, but only position. Now, of course, a point in infinite space is always at the centre, because there's nothing to define it as anywhere else. <laughs> it's deep, this stuff, isn't it? Bet you never thought we'd do a couple of tarot blokes, geezers, would be talking about this stuff. Right. So in that, then it goes on to, but permission, position does not mean anything at all unless there is something else for some other position with which it can be compared. One has to describe it. The only way is to have another point. I mean, this reminds me of Adam Eve, and we did Lilith, didn't we? A couple of weeks ago. So now we're doing Eve, um, these two points. So he's, this is describing essentially the same thing. Okay. Uh, what was it that I read? There's also, you have first the point, and the second point is actually the point reflecting about itself. And the third point is supposed to be something out, that's not himself. Yeah, well, yeah we, this is where it gets, you get your knickers in a twist, very easy on this one. So, so this means the only way to so have another point, and that means that one must invent the number two, making possible the line. So now we have the line. So which is this is from where we did our pairing tarot readings from. So a single a single card doesn't exist. A single tarot card on its own is you have to have another card with it that doesn't exist with it in order for something to happen. And people go on about the meanings of individual tarot cards. That's why it's not important. It's, it's got to be in relationship to something else, not the client or the reader but another card. Right. And then he says, the line does not really mean very much because there is no yet no measure of length. That's the thing. That line could be a billion trillion miles long or it could be an atoms thing. There's no perspective, no other point to see how long that line is and be able to measure it. So measuring is very important, balance and things. So... The limit of knowledge at this stage is that there are two things, 
two things. In order to be able to talk about them at all, but one cannot say they're near each other or that they're far apart. Only can, one can only say that they are distant. Right. In order to discriminate between them at all, there must be a third thing. We must now have another point. So now he started off with n, n soft and n soft all, which is in terms of light and limitless and all these things. Now we're defining the supernal triangle in terms of three points, which are, which are exactly the same thing. They're not different. We see them as different because we're labeling Kessa, Hukumar, and Bina and, and, and all these sort of things, but they're exactly the same, which is why if you read the, the Fall and the Magus card in the Book of Toth, you find that the, the, the meanings merge and, the, and basically he's talk, he talks about one and when he's talking about the other, you see. So they're actually the same thing, but then on a, a lower level of manifestation. Yes, which is why you have these triads that go through all of these things. So those. So if you look at the triads in the back of um, the Book of Toth, they're called the what then? The, the um, what are they called? Uh, yeah, good question. Last page. The vital triads. Sorry? The vital triads. Vi vital triads. That's not a Kung Fu movie. Oh. Um, so, so in terms of what this says here, then those each triad is essentially the same card. They're, they're all essentially the same. So when we do a three card reading, those three cards are essentially the same as each other, which is why we don't bother too much going into them. It's the fourth thing that's created. So, so, we're, we're, so we're, we're creating a third point in order to define the other two points. But when we do that, we create a surface, a plane, okay. which is a triangle. We can have a triangle on a plane. A plane doesn't have to be triangular shaped, it's just a plane. So now we have the whole of plane geometry here, basically. And now one can say A is nearer to B than A is to C. So we have a relative thing, and then you get the sines, cosines, tangents, and all that kind of stuff that does everybody's heads in, and no one can remember from school. Zet Bart does. I still need that every day. Sine, cosine, tangents, and all that stuff. Then he says, so far there's no substance in any of these ideas. In fact, there are no ideas at all. Um, which is the best way to read, to read tarot cards, except the idea of distance and perhaps the idea of betweenness. So yes, this, this, it's, um, it's called neti neti, um, this doctrine of nothing, of not this, not that, which comes up in Vedic uh, philosophy as well. So we're in very deep territory here. So now we can do plane geometry, which exists in theory, um, because it's, it's is on its own. It's just something in the air that now has a surface with three dots on it somewhere, which could be yeah, an equilateral triangle. You see this infinite universe of, is it darkness or light now, with the three dots in there? Well, it's light, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see them, would they? Would you? Yeah, yeah there must be some light, eh? Yeah, you see, yeah. Got to add the switch. Let there be light. And they were like, right. So there has, so this is still a theory, and it says it's incoherent and incoherent. It's it's it, it exists within itself, but it doesn't know anything outside of itself. It's just there, and and you can say it's there because it came from things that didn't exist but now do exist, but they can only see them in relationship to to each other. See, so it's just. Very incestuous, you're just going round in a circle. So, so then, so he has to, then says there's been no approach at all to the conception of a really existing thing. No more has been done than to make definitions. 
all in a purely ideal and imaginary world. This is the thing, it just exists somewhere. It's not a real thing. Then we have the abyss. Hey, I think um, we might as well say it here. Uh, you know, the whole point about, so we have the three points when we do a three card reading. If we go across the abyss to, to find new meanings on things. So all of, all of what we've been describing, I think um, we'll have to call it Naples Arrangement A, which we're doing here. And the original one, which we thought is the first one, which isn't the false first one, we'll have to call Naples Arrangement B. Just to, it's logically okay. inconsistent, except that, of course, most people have only seen the, the, the last one, not the first one. Well, anyway, so. So now we've, so now we've gone through the abyss to something that doesn't exist, we cross the abyss. So the next step must be the actual, at least, an approach to, or at least, must be the actual, or at least an approach to the actual. So we think of things existing as being real, but actually they're not real above the abyss. They don't exist, I see. And the fact that it's material makes that it's temporary. Yeah, and it's temporary, then it's, it's not real anywhere because it's transient. It's, it's not a uh, sort of uh, real thing. So the fourth point is essential. You've still got three points to define each other, but you still don't know where they are in relation to anything else, which is why you need the fourth point, which can be the observer. Okay, so now you have four points. Now you've gone from a plane to an actual solid, which is a pyramid, basically, tetrahedron. Uh, 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 uh. I have been thinking about this. And you know what? The fourth point could also be peculiar. Now, as long as you have only three points, each point is automatically connected to the two others. Yes. So they're all three connected, but with the fourth point... They're a, they're a singularity in themselves. There is, there is one point at the end which is, which is in no way connected to that point, if you take a square. How do we get to a square? That's four points. Instead no, of no, making... we're doing a solid. We're doing a solid. You don't, do, you don't go from you don't go from triangle to a square. You go from a plane to a solid. We could. I mean, if if they're not if well they're in, in Bart's world, yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> the square is two triangles. Discuss. It's, it, it could be. Then you, but then, of course, you have to have to make it a square. Then they have to be imaginary. You have to have I, wouldn't you, in order to I do have, it? With it's the square root point. of I. And with the fifth point in the, in the middle, it would be four triangles. Or a pyramid. Or a pyramid. <laughs> but suppose that's only four points, actually. So we, now we made a pyramid out of five points as well. Okay, whatever. Right. So where are we? We're at four. At, uh, uh, so, now, so now he says that we can have three coordinate axes, X, Y, and Z as well at this point. So this is the thing. So, you you know, X, Y, and Z, if you, if you remember your graph paper. I saw it and today. all that stuff. Axes. The three axes. So, so now we've gone from nothingness, which is nothing, but Bart says is something because you can't. Anyway, to, from nothingness, a something which can, said, can be said to exist. One has arrived at the idea of matter. But this existence is exceedingly tenuous for the only property of any given point in its position in relationship to certain other points, no change is possible. So you have matter, but it's not going anywhere. It's just it's sitting there. So one is therefore compelled in the analysis of known reality to postulate a fifth positive idea, which is that of motion. Um, this is where it gets a bit tricky because, you know, time's a construct as well, isn't it? It's not a natural property of anything. So, so motion is movement. So we're moving through space. Um, the point 
the, the fourth point defines matter, but it's in context of those three points that exist within each other, basically, which is um, which is basically everything's in Keter still. We're in, we're in the crown, we're in Keter at this moment. So, so we need change and sequence for things to happen. That's how we notice things. Things change. Oh, that's changed. If it stays the same, it's pretty boring. So now we've gone to the fifth position, which is number five, which is hay. And um, that's a hay in the Hebrew alphabet, which, of course, is either star or the emperor yay discuss here we go again <laughs> it's fundamental isn't it it is very what he says here is this is the letter traditionally associated consecrated consecrated to the great mother we're in bina basically this is the womb in which the great father which is Hukma, who is represented by the letter Yod, which is the phallus and the seed, and it's the old man in, in, in the um, diagram of the hermits. But actually, Yod encompasses the tetragrammaton as well, you see. And all, all letters of the Hebrew alphabet are made from the letter Yod. It gets a really complicated thing. So, so we've gone into massive, great... Kabbalistic deep stuff, which yes, is Kabbalah yeah. and Bales and everything else. So this is why no one ever reads this stuff <laughs> because it does read it. <laughs> it does, it's, it's, as long as you stick to the the newer stuff that, that's written by Mathers and stuff, Ma, Mathers like the introduction. That's not newer stuff. That's old stuff, Mathers. No, but, but but no, no. If you no, Mathers, reading... you know, quantum mechanics didn't exist in Mathers' day. No, but you have the Zohar once you start reading about the hairs. Yeah, of the... The, yeah, yeah, all that stuff comes in. Right. So, so, so he's talked about movement, okay? Time, motion, and time. Motion, it, you see the change in motion through time, and time is a construct. It's not an absolute thing because if you're interested in stuff, time goes like, by like that. And if you're bored, time stretches into eternity. Think geometry lessons with Bart. Ah, and time and space are connected as well. Actually, actually, time is most directly connected to gravity. And gravity is connected to mass. So to mere matter. Right. Matter has gravity, creates gravity. Gravity creates but, there, but also inherent problems with uh, with standing, you know, they get into space time continuums and all that kind of stuff as well. Aren't we? <laughs> yes. We're going to need an episode of National Geographics for that. So, so Crowley takes this idea of motion into past, present, and future, another trinity. Okay. Let's do the Naples arrangement, he says. It'll be fun, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Fun for masochists. <laughs> You'll never get back this time in your life. It's gone forever. <laughs> so, so, where were so, when you, so when you add that past, present and future to the system, you come to six, okay? Which is the center of the system, which is Tipras, self-conscious. You're aware of things moving in and around you in a sequence of time. Yes, Bart? Well... Paul, you have to admit, from here on, it gets a bit, it's it 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 gets a bit weird. I it's mean, first, a bit from the start. Well, yeah, I know, but first, the, the point, one, the point, I can get that. Yeah. Two points that I'm, I get that perfectly. Three points. They're, they're the same point. It's the same point, and therefore the no. third one is also the same point. I can get into that. Eh? But then you come at six, Tiferet, consciousness. Yes. Which I do get, but then the three that come after... I find let, it. Let, let's 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 just let's just yeah. let's wait. Yeah, but it's just a warning to the people. Sat it gets shit Ananda, or not as not sat shit Ananda as Bart was describing us earlier. Sat shit Ananda. Right. So then we come on to the Vedanta system, which is um, 
which is the next point. So we've got to number six, which is Tipperus, beauty, the center point on the Kabbalistic tree of life, which represents self-consciousness, capable of experience. So before then, there was no experience, actually. It's a notional thing we've been describing. Is life, actually. Is, is life as we know it. Yes. Yes. Anyway. So then he says we have to talk about Vedanta, which is what Bart just alluded to. And he says, um, Bart's looking for clarity. <laughs> and then he says, Brody says, the doctrine of the next three numbers, in brackets, to some minds at least, is not very clearly expressed. So that's the Kabbalistic way. So when you go to the Vedantic system for the numbers seven, eight, and nine, Although they correspond very close with the Kabbalistic ideas, in the Hindu analysis of existence, the sages postulated three qualities. Sat, the essence of being itself. Chit is thought. Chitto is, mind, is, is, is the mind activity. Thoughts going on. And where are we? Ananda, which is usually translated as bliss. The pleasure experienced by being in the course of events, which uh, on a mundane level is quite simple, isn't it? If things going on, it's more interesting if you're than watching paint dry, basically. Yes, Bart. Well, just trying to analyze this. This what was it? Where are we? Let me see where you are. Let me look this up. Nothing. The point. The limit. If we have, what does sat mean again? Being. being essence of being yes and shit, and shit. is thoughts or, or just thinking thoughts is the manifestation like, from being of the things so this is actually after just mere consciousness eh? so you go to essence of being you could think like a plant that's what we think a plant that's what we think of a plant for the moment okay. might change it eh? and then you have the second one which is bliss so that should be a, 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 let's say a higher degree of consciousness a more sophisticated well, no, no it's not a higher degree it's it's an expression of joy that seeing things change and moving and evolving so the first one is actually just the essence of being yes. and the second one is the the ability to enjoy thoughts, something thoughts thoughts just um muddy the water think of the swords Nine of Swords, the Ten of Swords, the Seven of Swords, the Three of Swords, you know, the Five of Swords as well. I mean, they just they just create frustration and and tension and, and worries and problems. But now well, they're it's... just like things are going on. They could be enjoying sitting by the river or, or by the sea. That, you know, that'd be oh, it's lovely. I'm sitting by the sea, watching the waves and sunshine and stuff. So, you have to admit it is peculiar. After the three things of geometry, then the three, what is it? Well, no, 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 because now we're in a personal situation. Before it was abstract, it wasn't a person or a being. Because, because these, none of these things existed, they're just concepts. But we haven't and, got to the point of being consciousness. We got conscious at six, okay? Which is one, two, three, four, five, which is the, the, the last one of the second trinity. Yes. So you get consciousness then. So then the next, so, so consciousness experienced is um, being, agitation, thoughts all over the place, and just getting caught up in ideas and politics and everything else. And, and, the, and, the, and in anger, we're just watching, the, it's called the Lila, it's called the play of things and everything else. So, so now we are. So now this person is experiencing things. So and then it says it explains the assumption of imperfection on the part of perfection. So now we're in the, we're, we're no longer we're no longer perfect. That geometry is perfect. It's pristine. It's it's exact. And now we get into the messy stuff of people and their own experiences and. 
what's boring to another one person is exciting and interesting and enjoyable to another. And, right. and according to Kabbalists, the only perfection is nothing, is it? Every every object is an interruption of the perfection of the nothingness. Yes, that's right. Because it's a thought. The thought disturbs consciousness. But the, the whole a lot of the work of an addict or a yogi is to control thoughts, is to not get caught up in other things. Most people are caught up in thoughts. Aren't the end the, the the three veils of nothingness? I uh, I thought they were also. Uh, how do you say um, a reference to meditation? Where you're and trying no, they're to... beyond that. They're, they're beyond those things. Yeah, because you're also trying to eliminate all thoughts from your head to make it empty. Yeah, but that but that's that would be from Tipreth. You'd be you know Tipreth in seven eight and nine. That's where you've been messing around with that stuff. So, so where have we got to? Uh, do, 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 do. This explains the assumption of imperfection on the path of perfection. Yes. The absolute would be nothing, would remain in the condition of nothingness. Therefore, in order to be conscious of its possibilities and to enjoy them, you must explore these possibilities. So this is, this is a way of saying that God has to create man in order for God to discover who God is. So God created man in his image, Adam, and all this kind of stuff as well. So you, so you can kind of get to these philosophical and religious ideas um, from ge geometric principles as well. So, and then he says, he talks about the, uh, the book of the Great Talk, which no one has. Yeah, no one heard about it. Hmm? I, I, it's here in this book, but because of, I have that already. Well, it's referenced, but nowhere else. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a lesson on nothingness, okay? <laughs> but he's referencing a book that doesn't exist. I mean, he does that a few times. He yeah, 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 yeah. He, he messes with your head on this stuff. He yeah, puts yeah, you well. in a different state because you're he's searching for you know. something that you can't find, which yeah. is nothingness. Yeah. So then well, he's he talks about all elements must at one time have been separate. And that would be the case with great heats. I don't think they, the, the idea of the Big Bang was around in those days. I can't quite remember. I'm not sure. So you've gone from unity to diversity. But he's also saying that the atom of each element possesses the memory of all his adventures in combination, which is how you can do past life stuff and everything else, because, you know, we're made of stars. You know, we're, we're all part of, we're, we're all part of a star once. Bits of us were anyway. Yeah, carbon, eh? yeah. carbon. It's carbon. Yeah, yeah, carbon. Carbon neutral. Um, so, so they say saying by experience, last of time, by virtue of memory, a thing could become something more than itself. Thus, a real development is possible. You know, the old thing, if you, if you don't remember the past, you continue making the same mistakes, don't you? But it's also this idea that you have to know where you come from in order to progress as well. You know, you're not just for going forward. There's also a past behind you that gives you this relationship. So we're back into past, present and future. See how he does this. He brings all these things up again in a different form. So now this is a personal experience. So as before, it was an abstract experience. Time continues whether there's a person or not to experience it because it still carries on anyway. Does time exist out of, outside of consciousness? Time is, time is a concept. Is a concept. It's not a real thing. It's yeah, but that's real. it. Is there time without consciousness? I don't believe so. Well, try it. If there's no one to experience time... Just go, time... go unconscious and see, see if you can tell. Well, I've been a few times, and to be honest, I, I had no concept of time. So then there isn't. When you're unconscious, there is no time. <laughs> right. I think you've answered your own question there, Bart. <laughs> um, so and then he does actually say one can then see a reason for any element deciding to go through this series of incarnations so he's bringing the subjects of incarnate reincarnation and all these things here because so and only so can he go and so to go is a thing quality associated with um the the virtues of the sphinx and it's also very much to do with the with the idea of the hangman as well so within the hangman there's a concept of all these 
So we're bringing Tari into this in a sneaky little way. It is in the end. Previous lives. Hey, come on, you can't. The, 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 the tree of life is the framework of the tarot. Or, yes, but it, it, you're, doing, you're chicken and egg here, you know? So, chicken and egg. <laughs> so then he says, therefore, you can have an infinite number of gods, individual and equal, though diverse, each one supreme and utterly indestructible. This is also the only explanation of how a being could create a world in which war or evil exists, etc. exists. Evil is only an appearance because, like good, it cannot affect the substance itself, but only multiplies combinations. We get into some pretty deep stuff here, aren't we? So this is the whole thing of God and why does God allow evil into the world and everything else? You know, you allow it's it depend. It's our def definition of evil. I mean, they're obviously evil stuff. The Nazis and lots of other things as well. And if we presuppose many elements, the rent to play is natural. It's, it's what goes on. Hey, so hey, then, Paul, did you see that footnote about that? Um, what's the footnote? The footnote says its magnetic virtue similarly is fiery, its conductivity airy, and its weight and hardness earthy. Yet, weight is but a function of the curvature of the space-time continuum. Earth is the throne of spirit. Yeah, so we're talking the princesses are on the thrones, aren't they? So. Yeah, he's basically repeating it, but he is talking about the space-time continuum. There you are, you see. Aha. Uh -huh. In the tarot book. Uh -huh. See? We got uh -huh. it. Right, so then he says, he goes back to these ideas of being, thought and bliss constitute the minimum possible qualities which a point must possess if it is to have a real sensible experience of itself. These correspond to the numbers nine, eight, and seven. The first idea of reality as known by the mind is therefore to conceive of the point as built up of these previous nine successive developments from zero. He also says Malpitz is in Keta after another way. And the fact that, and basically in essence, the point, the 10, the nine sephiroths, exists within Keta. So from a, you can have a doctrinal view on this and you can also see it from the, this point of view of geometry and how things are expressed. So this is really the map of the universe that we have here. And he, then he says these 10 numbers are represented in the tarot by the 40 small cards. And this is the reality of the Sephiroth and the numbers. So that's... Um, he doesn't say much about Malkut, eh? Well, he has. He's said a lot. He's talked about the throne, which is of the elements. This is the, the last... That's bit. where Malkut goes up to Bina and to Keta. Yeah, he, he... And, and Earth doesn't technically exist either. So one, 10 is 1 and 0, which is 1 or 0. So you're back into Keta anyway. 